So our next section is going to turn toward medications that we use in older age bipolar disorder. As I mentioned earlier, these are not drugs that are unique to older patients. Certainly we use these medications in any age adults. But let's talk about the specific points of concern with older people. Lithium is a drug that we tested in our Jerry BD study. I shared some of that data with you. Lithium is a effective drug for bipolar disorder. It is associated with some potential significant adverse effects, including weight gain, GI disturbances, cognitive slowing, neurotoxic effects that could occur even with relatively minor overdose. It has a narrow therapeutic index. We have to monitor drug levels. And you can see some endocrine abnormalities like thyroid toxicity and diabetes insipidus. If we start lithium in older people, there are some recommended baseline screenings that one would want to have either to do before starting or within the recent past. One of the good things about working with older people with bipolar disorder is that they often are seeing their primary care or internists and they will have medications that will have been drawn in the recent past. Things like renal function electrolytes, thyroid function, fasting blood glucose, and EKG, looking at QTC intervals or other relevant abnormalities would be good for me to know before I start lithium. Then generally, we will start with a low dose, perhaps 300 milligrams per day. In the Jerry BD study, we started with 150 milligrams twice daily. Usual dose should not generally exceed uh, 900 milligrams per day. However, that's not a hard and fast rule. There are some healthy elderly that will and do need higher dosage. You're going to want to evaluate concomitant medications, especially those that can alter sodium excretion like the NSAIDs or diuretics. Target serum concentration. So there's sort of the high and low school with serum concentrations. A good rule of thumb is that the older and more frail people are, one might tend to go toward that lower end of the swimming pool here, that 0.4 to 0.7 milliequivalents per liter target range rather than the upper ones. The potential neuroprotective qualities of lithium. So this is a slide from Lars Kessigans and colleagues looking at the rates of lithium prescription relevant to rates of dementia. And what it really identified is that while people that were prescribed at least one lithium prescription had higher rates of dementia, if we look at higher numbers of lithium prescriptions, we generally see that if they are prescribed lithium, stay on lithium, get a lot of prescriptions, that their rates of dementia get closer and closer to the general populations. Again, suggesting that there may be some protection the next slide looks at hospitalizations for lithium toxicity and use of other medications that may increase lithium levels and or reduce renal clearance. So some of these offending drugs where we may see an increased relative risk would include things like thiazide diuretics, loop diuretics, ACE inhibitors, and NSAID. So that really underscores the importance of looking at comorbid medications. And if a patient is on something that's going to make their kidney less effective at clearing lithium, then one may have to adjust either of those medications. But in particular, you're going to want to look at serum lithium levels as well as clinical signs and symptoms. Now, before I finish this section, I want to just share with you, I think, some very, very interesting data from Brent Forrester's group that emphasized the point that blood levels are not everything. So this group did a cross-sectional evaluation of 26 patients with bipolar disorder. 10 of them were over the age of 50. They looked at brain lithium levels, serum lithium levels, and cognition using MRS spectroscopy, and then found that serum and brain levels were correlated in the group as a whole. So in younger people, serum levels or blood levels of lithium corresponded to what was going on in the brain and the brain levels. But people that were over the age of 50 did not have that tight correlation. So kind of all bets were off. The predictability was less good. And in older patients, higher brain lithium was associated with frontal lobe dysfunction and higher depression ratings. So the conclusion here is that the relationship between brain and serum lithium levels is not predictable in older people. And it is the elevated brain lithium levels that appear to cause the toxicity. So the bottom line here is that you want to treat your patient, not your blood level. That's not to say that blood levels are not important. They are, and I would recommend that you routinely get them. However, you want to continue to use your good clinical judgment and assess your patients for other signs of toxicity as well. 
So to wrap up this section, the key points are that while lithium can effectively treat mania and may have neuroprotective qualities, side effects can also occur, especially in older people who have a greater medical burden. Studies that have examined blood levels or lithium versus brain levels of lithium suggests that those two levels are not always correlated, especially in older people. That means that while it's important to check serum or blood lithium levels, it is also important for clinicians to use their clinical judgment and treat the patient, not the blood level. 